All right, so today's video, we are going to look over how to update your Trinity fan controller. So this right here is the version one. These are the, uh, the prototype batch. There's about 10 of them out right now, and they're doing pretty good. So there's a micro USB port on the bottom of the unit that is used for updating and just powering it up on a computer or whatever. So plug it into there. Make sure that the USB cable that you're using is meant for data. Uh, if it's a charge only wire, it will not work. So make sure you can, you know, transfer files on it from like a phone or whatever. It can't be a charge only. So once that's plugged in, you're good to go. And we can move on to the computadora. Okay, so once we're on the computer, first we need to get our file. So hop on over to nickintimedesign.wordpress.com and go to downloads. So in uh, this area, you'll find all your downloads for all the products that I make and uh, other things like product documentation, resources, all that good stuff. But anyway, here we are, Trinity Fan Controller. Right now the latest update is version 1.2. You always want the latest version and no, you don't have to go through all of them, you can just download the latest. So we will click on this and this will open up to a, a Google Drive link. So we need to download this at the top right. So we'll click download and it should download. All right, it's not big at all, so it should come right up. So first we will have to open it and unzip it. And here it is. Let's put that on the desktop. Okay, so now that we have our, uh, our file, if we open that up. So we have the Arduino files here, this one and this one, which we will open up once we download the Arduino. There's also uh, the compiled hex for people that know how to do that, but I doubt many people will. We've also got upload instructions, uh, Steinhardt um, grapher for custom sensors, and the libraries we'll need to uh, compile successfully. I'll show you them in a bit. All right, so next up we need to download Arduino IDE. So we'll go to the website arduino.cc and go to download software and here we are the Arduino 1.8.5 IDE so click over here for whichever one you have whether it's Windows or Mac or whatever so we're gonna click Mac and you can contribute or just download I do contribute when I make uh, new projects because they do help me out quite a lot with their open source so we'll click just download and that'll download and we'll be good to go Okay, so once Arduino IDE is installed, we should have everything we need. So come over to here, and we will double-click on our file, Trinity FC v1.2. And if everything goes well, Arduino should uh, open up. This could take a bit on slower machines, so just give it time. All right, so here is our file right here. Excelente. So we've got all of our fancy dancy open source text and everything and we've got an update log in here so you can see what's been changed. And if you want to go through the whole code and see what the heck's actually going on, feel free to do so. There's plenty, plenty to go through. Um, okay, so we want to make sure that both tabs come up. Uh, the main code, this Trinity FC, and the functions tab, both of these need to be here for that to work. So since it is, we're good to go. All right, so first up, we will go into Tools over here, and we will go to the Arduino AVR boards. We want the Arduino Leonardo. After that, we will want to select the port that it's on, this uh, USB modem port, which should say Leonardo next to it. And then on top of that, just make sure you get the AVR ISP Mark II as the programmer. So now that that's good, we can hit the Verify button and make sure everything is happy. So you'll notice some stuff happening at the bottom. So as long as it doesn't give you an error right away, that's usually a good sign. All right, cool. It compiled properly, and everything looks good. If you want, we can even make sure that everything matches. 255, 244, good. 1329, okay, excellent. So if this does not work, if you get some kind of error about the, um, the libraries being wrong, or not included, you'll have to go to sketch, include library, add.zip library, and then you'll have to go find it. So for us, we put it on the desktop, then you'll have to navigate to the folder, 
and we'll go to library and click on you have to do this one at a time but click one of the zips click choose and it should okay library added to library is cool and we can also verify that by going into include library and if we scroll down to I think contributed then we should see the two on here so we'll have our GFX library and the other one is the LED one, the LED backpack library. Okay. Okay. So once both libraries are added, then you can try to verify again and see if it works this time. If everything goes well, then it should. All right, beautiful. Now that everything is good, I think we're ready to do the uploading. Okay, so there is a bit of timing involved with uploading new code. These things have a bootloader on them, and what that does is it accepts new code and puts it onto the, the chip. So we need to make sure that we get into the bootloader uh, so that the code actually works properly. So this is what the board looks like, nice and pretty. And you'll notice that big black reset button in the middle. That is important. So on the very first models, uh, I didn't have them programmed like this, so if you hit upload, it should just upload. But on the ones I release later, uh, it'll only enter the bootloader mode when you push that restart button. So that is important, because without pushing that button, this will never work. So I'll just show you what it looks like when it doesn't work. So when we hit upload, first it'll compile, so it'll do the same thing it does when verifying. And then, if you notice, it restarted the screen, and it's looking for ports. So in this time, when you notice the screen's bugging out, and it says ports, it's time to press that, um, that button. If you don't push it fast enough, it's, it'll give you an error and say it can't find the board. Likewise, if you push the button uh, too early, so say we push the button now, notice we have blinkies, and then you try to upload, you will also get an error because it can't find the port. So the way that this thing works is um, it's so when you push that button it's actually making a new port and that's what the program's looking for so you have to push the restart button after it's done compiling so because if you don't you'll get like a like an error that is not responding and you'll just have to sit there and wait alright so now that all that happened I will show you how to do it properly so we will hit upload then we will grab the device and push the button once the screen bugs out or it starts showing ports. So upload. Okay, the screen's bugging out. Now we push the button. And now it says it found the port. The red light's blinking fast, reading, and boom. There we go. That is a successful upload. And to test that, we can go into push our next button to go to advance. And then we will go all the way over to version. And we should get 1.2. Hey, look at that. And there you go. Your Trinity VFC has been successfully updated. There you go. Simple as that. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me or comment. I am here to help. So hopefully all that made sense. Enjoy your new software.